Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. So whenever I criticize somebody a lot, like Baker Mayfield, I always start with a qualifier. I think he and his wife are great people. I know a private story about them that is very complimentary. I think he's one of the 20 best quarterbacks in the league, and I'm rooting for him. I just thought he was overdrafted and immature. And um, so Aaron Rodgers, I feel the same way. I'd vote him for the Hall of Fame. I think there are qualities about him that were better than Aaron Rodgers, or I think there are qualities about him that are better than Brett Favre. Um, but he has become, it feels to me, podcast guest slash quarterback on um, that. He is sort of just doing his own thing. Uh, Bill Simmons always had this theory in, in and it, I've had a similar one, like the older you get, the richer you get. If you're not married, you get a little weird. Uh, I could name like four people off the top of my head. You get a little odd. You're on your phone too much. And, um, but I've had so many opinions about Aaron Rodgers. Um, I just don't think he's going to be as good as a quarterback as people think. His last year in Green Bay, he wasn't as good as Jordan Love now with a very good offensive line, a good offensive coach, and like symmetry inside the building. I don't know if Sala can coach. Nat Hackett's a disaster. And that O-line is they cross your fingers. He won't be the best quarterback in his division. And probably with Tua and Josh Allen, he'll be the third most productive. So where do you stand on Rodgers? I don't believe you can be a savior at 40 years old, off a major surgery with Josh Allen, Mike McDaniel, and Tua in a division. I think C.J. Stroud can in his division. I don't think Aaron can at his age with those quarterbacks in his division. Where do you stand right, on so The coming off the injury part is the huge caveat, right? Because we saw Brady do it in Tampa. So it is yeah. possible, but 40-year-olds coming off of Achilles injury with, we'll say, other interests, uh, to put it mildly, like he he's not Brady, right? Brady maniacal about football, 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 right. football, football. Obviously, that's not Rogers. This is maybe not as fact based and analytical as you would come to expect an opinion of mine to be. I just hope he's good so that we haven't been wasting our time these last two years. We have talked so much about Aaron Rodgers on Pat McAfee and Aaron Rodgers on Joe Rogan and Aaron Rodgers and RFK and Aaron Rodgers, the vaccine and Aaron Rodgers, the, the toxic internet brain and Aaron Rodgers, the troll. And I'm just like, man, he is one of the most talented quarterbacks that I've ever seen play the position. He influenced Mahomes. He influenced Caleb. He is a first ballot Hall of Famer. The only player in the history of the sport yeah. with more MVPs than him is Peyton Manning. He is one of the first guys that I've ever seen who was a gunslinger who didn't turn the ball over. Like he had a he has a 45 yeah. touchdown, six interception season on his leg. Like that is <laughs> that is a, one of the craziest seasons I've ever seen anyone have in my life. And so like it, there's just been so many column inches and so many takes and so many so much word vomit on Aaron Rodgers the last two years that I want, I feel like we deserve Jets Bengals divisional weekend. Like I feel like we deserve it as sports fans. I want to see Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen for the division week 17. And I just, I just, I'm, I'm rooting for him to be better than his weirdness and his age and his injury suggest that he should be because they're going to be on national TV six times. Again, like it is really compelling sports theater, and it sucked watching Zach Wilson on Monday Night Football last year. I don't want to do that type of thing again. So I I am hoping that the conversation about Aaron Rodgers can be about football again, because he's simply one of the greatest football players that I've ever seen. And if he goes out and he's just bad, he'll still be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He'll be a bit of yeah. a punchline. And that would suck because, yeah, I disagree with a ton of things that he said, but I still love watching the guy play football. And so I'm really hoping that we get some version. He's not going to be 45 and six, 
But I hope we get a great version of Aaron Rodgers because then at least it will have made the last two years of nonsense feel like it mattered in a sports sense. Yeah, it'd be like promising your kids a great vacation for two years and then you go to Hawaii and there's a tropical yes. storm. Yes, you're you're the perfect. That's the perfect analogy. Exactly. It's like, come on, man. Like this hat. This hat. I want if if if, if, if it's thirty to to six Niners Jets in week one, and he throws three picks. I'm gonna be like, come on. I don't care about what he says on Tuesday. Like just like give me a, one of those throws where you flick it with your wrist. It goes thirty yards on a dime. Garrett Wilson catches it, and that game's 27-24 in the fourth quarter with two minutes left. Like give give me that to make all this other nonsense worth something. So let me ask you, Danny Parkins, 670, the score. He just left that Chicago iconic radio station for an, a television deal to be announced. You've had a different summer. Uh, how has it been for you? You just wrapped up a big charity. Hey, football fans. If you're looking to dominate your fantasy league next year, then we've got the channel for you. From the NFL draft through training camp in week one to Super Bowl Sunday, Fantasy Pros is the home of football content you cannot afford to miss. Subscribe today and your team will be in championship form in no time. Yeah, uh, I got to say, um, this was not how I drew up my summer. Uh, I was looking for like family vacation and, you know, maybe a golf trip with some buddies and a little R&R. But, uh, you know, the Wednesday to Saturday of this last week is the craziest four day stretch of my career. And, I, and it's not even close. Um Wednesday, we wrapped up the Parkinson Spiegel show. So got a goodbye show in radio. And you know that that's rare. There are legends of the business that sometimes <laughs> will be fired and never get to say goodbye to their audience. So, uh, you know, we got to do it up big right. and talk to people who uh, really mattered to the show and to us. And my family came in and surprised uh, me in studio for the last segment, which was really emotional. I kind of have lived my life on the radio and so shared things about uh, you know, my first son being in the hospital from his premature birth and my dad with dementia and passing away, my brother passing away. So like it was super emotional bringing them all in. But then that coincided with something that I've been working on for literally over a year, 13 months, planning a radiothon for cancer research in partnership with the Cubs. Uh, I broadcast for 24 hours Thursday to Friday in honor of my brother, Brad, who passed away from glioblastoma, terminal brain cancer raised $560,000 in 24 hours, wow. uh, brought on, you know, about 14 cancer patients, three world renowned doctors. And then between nine P and four a took 60 calls from people telling their cancer stories, uh, just incredibly emotional people making $5 donations, people making surprise $15,000 donations. Tom Ricketts, owner of the Cubs, donated 25 grand, not expected. It was just uh, wow. Ryan Sandberg announced for the first time that he was cancer free, like live on the air, unplanned. I had no idea. He just happened to have his last uh, oncology appointment that morning and then came in and announced it. So, I mean, truly one of the craziest broadcast days of my life leading in into Saturday at Wrigley. We had planned, and it had never happened before, you know, the iconic stand-up to cancer moment that happens at the World Series or All-Star game. Yeah. It had never happened at a local game, at a local ballpark. So we, the Cubs, myself, stand-up to cancer, have been planning this event for a long time. And Brad's son, my nephew, got to throw out the first pitch to Craig Council, the Cubs manager, who happened to grow up with my brother, Brad, childhood best friends. So I had my whole family on the field where my Brad's son throws out the first pitch. Then the stadium stands for cancer at the end of the fourth inning. I've got 10 family members standing, holding, you know, my brother's name up there. And it was just, you know, it was, in, it was incredible. It was just so emotional. And this charity that I've joined the board of directors of, I know I'm rambling a little bit, but it was just like wrapping up a radio show that I loved uh wrapping up this charity event that i'd planned for so long doing this like incredibly symbolic thing in my brother's honor it's just been a whirlwind of a 96 hours man well congratulations and your next chapter uh i'm not going to give it away but it's uh it's exciting and it's it's i think one of the more enjoyable things for me at this point in my life is watching young talented people get opportunities and uh, help lubricate those 
and uh, you're going to crush it wherever you go. And we both know where you're going. No, I, so, I, I uh, no, that's the thing. Like uh, after the radio thought I'm supposed to have a week off and now it's uh, I'm coming to you from a hotel room, <laughs> you know? So like the, my, my life is not slowing down anytime soon, but listen, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I could not be excited, more excited about what's next. You just have to promise that you'll have me on the pod when we can actually talk about it. Yes, I will. I promise. Um, all right, Danny, whatever you're doing, the mystery uh, that's about to be uh, unveiled. I uh, hope you're a regular on my podcast, and it's good talking again, buddy, and congrats on all your success. Oh, thank you so much. You know, anytime I would love to come on. Thank you, sir.